Hey, here we go. Welcome back. Thought we'd have a quick look and see what happened in turn one with the Allied movement. And of course, most of the activity did focus around, I'm going to just gently put the camera here, uh, focused around Bastogne, which is here, and the surrounding areas. Now, as the German player, uh, as usual, I was probably overly aggressive with my movement uh, in attempts to isolate the Bastogne area so that we could capture these crossroads and this rail line to allow trace supply and then push forward from there either you know this direction or this direction towards Antwerp etc. <clears throat> the response by the Allies as I looked at the map uh, this unit enemy unit here has uh, no zone of control it's in move mode so these rail lines are open so my understanding is that I can uh, I can rail 101st Airborne right into there, which is fantastic. Uh, so we did that. So that gives us the the 101st Airborne uh, riding along in train carriages. Boom! Thanks for playing there in uh, because it's only zones of enemy zones of control. Uh, and it's and, and the hex has to be under our control, which indeed it is. So that's this location here. The Allies pressed in quickly with 10th Armoured, uh, ran some uh, arty barrages against this uh, enemy stack here. This is part of Panzerlia, I hear. Uh, here they had to go ammo low, of course, because they <coughs> were lunging into the whoops, excuse me, into the fray. They uh, got a pretty, it's a pretty me mediocre result, but the, the end uh, game here was a step loss for the Americans, which they took on these two-step regiments, and these guys took a, a retreat, and, and then the uh, Allies advanced in there. Second Armoured over here on the, on the right-hand side of the screen uh, pushed in cl as close as they can, uh, trying to block off other movement areas. The interesting thing... The, or the, the I guess the biggest achievement that occurred for the the Allies was a concentrated attack right here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that was uh, this hex right here. So let me get the tweezers. So we had to go ammo low to do this because there's no there's no transport for anything. Uh, there's no way to move supply around, and we'll talk about that in a second. But this trail here was being used uh, to connect back to a rail hex for trace supply for all of these guys. And by attacking the unit was here, in here, it was a Volksgrenadier unit, and we, we brought some AT guns and uh, this uh, very reduced division, as well as some other guys here. So we're still holding the rail line there uh, effectively, and uh, that is now going to put all these guys out of supply. So that's... <clears throat> Arguably, unless we can retake this hex and and or or better still this hex, um, it's pretty much there would be game over for all these guys in terms of their efforts. You know, they tried to push uh, push pretty aggressively over here uh, to Liege. Um, once again, probably overextended. But my thinking was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> my thinking was here that. If we don't push deep early, we're going to have to fight our way along these trails and roads, and that's going to take a long time, and it's only a nine-turn scenario. So to the, uh, the, the victor, uh, we'll get the spoils for the, if you're there brash and bold, I think, in, the, in this case. So we'll see. Uh, we'll probably get one more turn of this done, and then by that point, I think we'll probably be at a stopping point. I need to pack everything up uh, in, in order to leave in... Uh, well, gee, in two days. So yeah, this is, and this will take a, quite a while to pack up. It took a long time to set up. This scenario has a lot of pieces on it, and it uh, it was uh, a pretty extensive exercise. Over here, I was preparing to, uh, well, preparing to assault across the river here, preparing to attack Ninth Panzer here, but the big challenge we have is is supply. Uh, there are two trucks. That can move two SP right there, and um, we received four SP for the Allies for the for the uh, Commonwealth, 
and uh, 11 for the for the uh, Americans. And uh, there are now 5, 10, uh, 11, 12 SP sitting on the edge of the board. And there's no way to move them unless you use rail. Now, it was critical for me to get the airborne in there. So that's 6 SP. That, that took up uh, the entire uh, allocation of, of rail, I think. How many was that? One, two, three. That took four, and I brought two SP with me. Six. So that's the rail done um, and two trucks. Now, so that means really no armor can move. Now, there is, there, is, there is supply spread around. There's two here, there's three here, which means I've got to work out, you know, can this guy reach that uh, supply and then throw it to this, these guys here? And it, I thought, well, even if I was successful, I'm not going to be able to follow up on any success here. So I decided to forestall any offensive maneuvers in this area, hoping, you know, really the idea here was I wanted to keep forces uh, from the Germans engaged here so they don't filter off and, and head towards the bulge that they're trying to build. Uh, I wanted to keep them all engaged here, but I don't really have the supply to do that in the first turn. Now, it could well be that come turn two or three, once I've done shuttling uh, with, the, with my two little trucks and some rail, uh, I can move some some supply closer to areas where it'll be more useful, and we can kind of get at, get after it from there. But this uh, this three SP all the way over here is practically useless to me. Uh, I can't really do very much with it unless I can uh, throw it to forces around here, which is entirely possible. These guys have great range twelve. I think there's a few SP underneath here. No, just a couple of T. They have none. Uh, that's a full armor division. Now, one of the good things is, you know, you if you spend one SP, you can activate or or fuel all the units in your range except for formation type units. So, one SP is going to go a long, a long way in these tight these tight uh, situations here. So, we were we were able to move a lot of units. Uh, under the auspices of that rule, <clears throat> did use a hundred. I did use two uh, SP to DG the 12th Panzer SS just to put a stop to their uh, more serious efforts in the second turn. They're going to have to sit there and wallow uh, and try and recover. They're not going to be able to attack into Vervier uh, any further than they are. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. I did strip quite a bit of uh, uh, forces from here. I uh, spent quite a bit of supply to move units all the way over to here, put some guys in the Stratmo as well, and uh, obviously got some other reinforcements coming in under Stratmo. Uh, so it's been interesting and uh, a lot better than I thought it would be. After doing the initial German turn, I was like, wow, these guys have really gone way too far. That's a very ahistorical craziness. But I looked at the turn cycle, and the turn cycles are basically uh well they're three day cycles i guess but uh you know we're on the 15th no well that's four days uh so like is it the start of the 15th 16th, 17th, 18th. yeah it's a four day turn cycle so four days of combat activity we can see that units can move a lot further and do a lot more and this is sort of rough attempting to reflect that uh, my guess is though that uh the Battle of the Bulge, this is probably the wrong scale for it, but it's an interesting little exercise in of itself, even if it has been painful to set up. But anyway, I thought I'd share that with you, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao.